Hello there. Hey guys, Josh Lloyd, what to watch for in the NBA for Friday. Let's take a look. First game, Rockets, Raptors. What do we get from Justin Patton? Will they go back to this small lineup again? I imagine they will. But how much does Patton play? Do we get 25 out of him? 17 out of him? How many minutes does he get there behind P.J. Tucker? Because he can come in and block some shots. He's probably just a Hail Mary 12-team league guy. He's more of a 16-teamer. But let's see what he can do. While David Nwaba saw his minutes cut down to like 17 last game, he was still insanely productive on the back of some good shooting, some high usage, and some good defensive stats. But if he's a 17-minute-a-night player... He's not someone we want to pay particular attention to on this Rockets team, especially with the looming specter of Kevin Porter joining this team after the All-Star break. Nwaba is, again, more just of a stream guy than a must-roster player. For the Raptors, Norman Powell will likely remain in the starting lineup, almost definitely remain in the starting lineup. How does that all look in terms of minutes and usage? I imagine the minutes stay up. The usage is the big question, and he uh, looks like he's remaining a 12-team league guy. While the wiki Chris Boucher, low minutes last game. This could be one where he absolutely dominates, though. No big center to go up against. Could he play 29 minutes in this one? I think it is a distinct possibility. Could he have 20 points, 8 boards, 3 blocks, 4 triples? Like that. That's a real possibility for someone like Boucher in this matchup. Could not be any better for him, which almost invariably means that he'll play 12 minutes, and uh, Nurse will be an absolute dickhead about it. So let's have a look at the next game. The Pacers. The Celtics, Jeremy Lamb. Production is dropping off at the moment for Lamb. McConnell, McDermott, they're all getting more minutes than him. He is still shooting at a pretty high level, but the production's not there. If we had more of an idea when Warren and Levert would come back, he'd be a pretty clear drop, in my opinion, but we're just so many unknowns. Like They might come back end of April. Like We just don't know with Warren and Levert. That's why you got to sort of keep holding on to Lamb. But I'd like to see something a bit more positive than what he's done so far in the last couple of weeks. And then next up, we take a look at Timothy John McConnell, one of those guys who is getting those minutes. Assists, excellent. Steals, unbelievable. Must roster 12-team league guy. Must roster points league guy, probably. Yeah, the minutes are there. The production's there. It's been unbelievably consistent from McConnell. So yeah, he's a must roster player for the Celtics. The Rock DJ, Robbie Williams. 14 minutes in back-to-back -back games. He, he's just, he's a problem in terms of production. Some of the per minute stuff is great. Some of the minutes are terrible. Yeah, what does he get? Now, this is a matchup where against Sabonis and Turner, maybe we do get more of Tyson Thompson, meaning Williams gets to play more minutes. But I'm not putting a huge amount of faith in it. I think he's worth a hold, barely, but shit, it's rough. And speaking of rough, Kemba Walker. Hyper inefficient so far this season. He is getting his minutes bumping up, which is an encouraging factor, but still it's been poor. I want to see him at least look somewhat like the player that we've seen over the last couple of seasons. The Jazz and the Heat. Um, Jinglin Joe. Rostered in a lot of leagues. I don't fully believe in him as a must-roster 12-team league guy. I imagine this game is competitive. The Jazz runs a regular rotation, so is Ingles 28 minutes. Or is Ingles 25 minutes? Because to me, that's a big difference. 27, 28 minutes is 12-team worthy for Jinglin. 25 is not. And then the Don. Don Mitchell. He's Don. He's good. Assists are up. Even with Conley back, does that continue? How much is he going to have the ball in his hands? Will he continue to run more like a point guard versus the guy who was playing a lot more off-ball to begin the year? And then for the Heat, Goran Dragic is back. We don't know about Tyler Hero. And that's going to create some issues for Kendrick Nunn. We saw Nunn see his usage drop way off. Still played a lot of minutes, but that was without Hero last game and shot two of nine from the field. So, you know, getting Nunn back with Dragic is going to be a key indicator for Nunn. And then, of course, we've got to work Avery Bradley back in at some point. And then Dunk Robinson, who at the moment is shooting better. His three-point percentage has risen. His two-point percentage is up. He doesn't do very much outside of shoot. Like, that's what his game is. And that's why he's not a particularly good... Um, fantasy player, but I want to see if he can improve some and maybe work his way back into 12-team value. Also, quick note that Bam Adebayo is questionable in this game. So that is obviously big. If he is out, does Precious become a stream? Probably. He was earlier this season when uh, Bam was sidelined. The Hawks and the Thunder. The Italian cock, Danilo Gallinari. Hands off my cock! Safe to say he won't do what he did last game. He had 10 threes in that one. Um... Yeah, I don't think that sort of role is going to be there. He played big minutes because John Collins had some foul trouble. 
So is this the game where everyone overreacts to adding Gallinari and then he shits the bed again? Probably. And then we want to watch John Collins, who just can't do anything. Low-ish minutes, usage not great, shooting dropping off. He's nowhere near a drop, but is he going to be a guy that can push back to the top 30? I significantly doubt it. The Thunder are going to be without Al Horford. They're resting him on the first game of a back-to-back this time out. So there's Isaiah Roby, who we're going to need to watch quite a bit. And then the Salt Flake, Theo Maladon. I don't know why I said his name correctly with the American accent. It's supposed to be Theo Maladon or Theo Maladon. Um, Maladon's getting 30-plus minutes. He's getting good steals. The shooting isn't great. We could do with a bit more in terms of his assists, but I like him still for 12s. While the Oklahoma City mudflap, Kenrich Williams. With Roby out, Williams is probably going to play 20-plus minutes. And maybe he can be a stream guy for steals. The Suns and the Bulls, DeAndre Ayton. A lot of people ask me, is Ayton a buy low? I don't believe so. I think that sort of well, what we're getting from him basically is just what we're going to get <clears throat> end of the season. This is his role. Go out there, get some rebounds, block some shots. Don't be aggressive offensively. Don't take a lot of shots. Don't get to the line. That's just what he does, and that's just who he is. Well, Jay Crowder is playing at a pretty high level at the moment, and let's see if it can continue, but it most likely won't. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. I wonder if they finally pull the pin on the Frank Kaminsky nonsense and put Crowder back into that starting line. That'll be key to watch too. For the Bulls, Patrick Williams had a really big game last time. Now, he is prone to inconsistencies. I think he's probably more of a 14-team league guy than a 12-teamer, but big game, good across-the-board production, really solid for Roto Leagues in particular because of his good across-the-board numbers. And then Wendell Carter Jr., who is absolutely on fire at the moment. Can he continue that against Aiton? The last two games have come against teams with sub centers. I think the Rockets was one of them, and I think the Kings might have been the other um, in terms of defense. Um, can he do it against a Phoenix team that's been pretty good on that end? And Aiton has improved his defense a lot. That is going to be a big test here for Wendell. The Clippers and the Grizzlies. Um, these teams playing each other today, and they're going to play each other again. So, Patrick Beverly. It is a back-to-back. I imagine he plays. He is pushing towards 12-team league value. Is he a must roster? He's not quite there. While the other way around, Nick Batum is trending away from being a 12-team must roster player. Since his concussion, he's been way off, usage low, efficiency dropping, and yeah, he probably will trend towards being a drop, would be my guess. For the Grizz, do they play Justice Winslow in the back-to-back? They made some curious rotation decisions on Thursday by taking DeAnthony Melton out of the rotation. Is that what they keep doing? What will Winslow look like four games back? And uh, then I want to watch Jonas Valanciunas. Jonas Vasilinovasas. Yep. Um, he's been great this year. I do worry a bit about what happens to him later on in the season when Jackson returns. But let's see how he goes matching up, especially when the Clippers go small and put Marcus Morris at center. I think JV could have a pretty decent game here. The Kings and the Pistons. Marvin Bagley, I just I just don't think he's good. Simple as that. We know Whiteside and Parker are dealing with COVID protocol stuff, so Bagley's minutes do probably push up, but he's just so rough to watch. He's more of a points league guy than a category league player. While Tyrese Halliburton's been awesome, he's just always someone fun to watch. How does the usage look? That's one of the key factors for him. For the Pistons, Saban Lee, fewer minutes last game than Dennis Smith. I still think that he is worth holding in 12-team leagues, but he's shooting like 70% from the field, some number that is absolutely impossible to maintain. So what is he able to do when the shot doesn't fall? That's going to be the big question. While Mason Plumley continues to be awesome, he has been so, so strong this season. Is he able to, or will he play 30-plus? I see no reason why not. And against the Kings, I reckon a big game might be coming from Mace. The Hornets and the Warriors. PJ Washington Jr. With Cody Zeller questionable, Will Washington get more of those center minutes? That could be a real boost in his value. And of course, if Zala doesn't play, will they go to 30 minutes of Biombo or 25 minutes of Biombo? I'd like to see them play 25. Give Washington the rest of those minutes there and then force a lot more Miles Bridges in there and maybe some more Malik Monk, especially without um, Devontae Graham there. So I want to watch Biombo. Is he an option as a field goal percentage rebound block type of player as a stream for Friday? Sure. But long-term, no. For the Warriors, Draymond Green, last two games, uh, defensive numbers have been great, and that's with Blunty and Looney back. So that's super encouraging. Green has been a top 50 player over the last month, while Wiseman... He's getting really high usage off the bench. He's also not playing 20 minutes a night, and he's struggling in a lot of areas. I I do not think, unless it's stashing, he has no current value 
in 12 team leagues, and I'm not even particularly high on him as a stash option as we move forward. The Blakers, the Blakers, the Blazers and the Lakers. No Harry Giles, so that means more minutes for Derek Jones Jr. and more opportunities for Jones to go out there and block a shit ton of shots. That can give him stream value. His value has been up lately. And let's just watch Damian Lillard, because okay? I haven't mentioned Lillard much on these What to Watch For shows, but it's time to watch him because he's putting up great numbers. He's carrying a high usage load. His passing has been good. He's putting up really strong numbers. Free throw percentage immaculate. Let's see what he does here against the Lakers. Dennis Schroeder is back most likely for the Lakers. So what does that mean for someone like Taylor Horton Tucker, who started last game in his place? It almost assuredly means back to the bench, but does he play over Wes Matthews or not? That's where we need to pay attention. Well, Montrez Harrell, um, production is okay, but minutes are way down. At some point, I think that is going to catch up with him, at least until Anthony Davis returns. But let's keep an eye on the usage and minutes split here for the table in this matchup. Some stream options for Friday. Patty Beverly. Patty Williams, like it. Isaiah Roby, sure. David Nwaba, yeah, worth a look. And then Kent Bazemore, a guy that's been getting a little bit more run, and I think that he could make some sense as somewhat of a stream. And then you go to points league streamers. These are rostered in under 50% of leagues. The wild thing, Jay Sean Tate. Theo Maladon. TJ McConnell, the depressed penis, Sadiq Bay, and Tristan Thompson can be options to stream in for points league. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and hit the notification bell, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. See ya.